Hi, this is Jonathan Marks, and I'm speaking with Dr. Luis Rogi, who's MD and PhD. He's a professor of child psychiatry at the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil. He's also the director of the program for ADHD at the Hospital de Clinicas de Porto Alegre and vice coordinator of the National Institute of Developmental Psychiatry in Brazil. Dr. Roger is the editor of three publications on ADHD and psychiatry, and he is the current president of the World Federation of ADHD. Dr. Roger is presenting at the 2017 annual meeting of APSARD, the American Professional Society of ADHD and Related Disorders, this coming January 13th to 15th at the Mayflower Hotel in Washington, D.C. His presentation is titled Clinical and Epidemiological Studies of ADHD Across the Lifespan, Does Age of Onset Matter? Dr. Roger, what will people be learning at your presentation? Give us an overview. First of all, thank you very much for having me. In this plenary session, I will discuss uh, some recent and very controversial evidence from uh, four different population of studies suggesting that a significant proportion of adults with ADHD might have their onset of symptoms at adolescence or adulthood. Indeed, uh, in our studies and in the studies from others, most of uh, these ADHD cases in these samples have uh, this trajectory. I will present also data from these studies indicating that, uh, that these uh, findings are not an artifact uh, of methodological issues in the studies as suggested by some investigators. So Dr. Roger, so right now it's considered ADHD if an onset is recognized at about the age of 12. Is there a significant difference in having a definition of by the age of 12 versus later in life? There is no difference in the diagnostic criteria for ADHD worldwide. In fact, I was part of the DSM-5 working group for ADHD. The fact here, Jonathan, is that in population studies, probably you have more ADHD in attentive type. You have less uh, severe cases and probably with less comorbidity. You probably have also in population of samples more subjects with a greater cognitive reserve and you potentially have more families helping these subjects coping with ADHD symptoms and impairment. So this scenario is different from the clinical scenario and in Population of studies is most possible that you begin to present ADHD symptoms and impairments only when you face higher demands, as for instance in a transitional period from adolescence to adulthood, where more autonomy and independence is required. So uh, we are not talking about a different type or a different ADHD. We are just talking that probably in population of samples you find a different phenotype with a different characteristics, less severe, less comorbid, and probably with more inattentive symptoms than we normally find in clinical samples. My question is, in the United States, there's a prevalence of ADHD of about 5%. Is that true around the world, or does it differ by country? Jonathan, we published in the American Journal of Psychiatry assessing the prevalence of ADHD in children and adolescents worldwide. We included more than 102 studies about the prevalence of ADHD in all the continents. We documented that the prevalence of ADHD was around 5.3 worldwide. And more importantly, that there were no significant difference in the prevalence rates across the countries. The differences around the world are much more related to methodological factors. Thank you for that clarification. And the final question is part of your title, does the age of onset matter? The evidence that we have right now is that uh, the age of onset does not matter in terms of uh, the clinical presentation. The only thing that we have, and this is what I will be discussing much more in this plenary session, is that cases beginning after childhood are much more common in population of samples of adult ADHD. In addition, Jonathan, I will present a work in progress in three of these cohorts and, the, and also in the MTA 
assessing potential predictors for adult ADHD. In the context of a personalized medicine, we will test the performance of a predictor score that might work for ADHD as the Framingham score worked for cardiovascular disorders. That's fabulous. That's quite a new development. That's wonderful, Dr. Roger. Well, thank you for talking with us. This has been Dr. Luis Roger. He's going to be presenting at the 2017 annual meeting of APSARD this coming January 13th to 15th at the Mayflower Hotel in Washington, D.C. There are many professionals coming from many different countries to this meeting. It will be quite a gathering. Thanks so much for being with us, Dr. Roger. Okay, Jonathan. Thank you very much for having me.